Picture this, combining Samsung's powerful hardware with Google's sleek and speedy Pixel OS. What if I told you that your Galaxy smartphone could run the cleanest, most up-to-date version of Android, just like a Google Pixel? Sounds exciting, right? Well, get ready, because in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to transform your Galaxy device into a Pixel-powered beast. If you take a look at the Pixel OS website, you'll see a list of Samsung phones that can be converted into a Pixel-like experience with Android 14. Each phone might have a slightly different installation process. But don't worry, I've simplified it all for you. Follow this guide, and no matter which phone you have from the list, you'll be able to install Pixel OS on it. Now, there's an exception for the Galaxy 9 series. The method is a bit different for these phones, so if you have a Galaxy 9, you can jump straight to the relevant section using the chapters provided in this video. But before you do that, make sure you know the prerequisites. Hang tight and I'll let you know when it's time to move on to that section. I've been using this ROM for a few days now, and let me tell you, it's been a stable experience. No issues, no bugs, and everything works smoothly. The performance is great and the battery life is impressive. However, you will lose some of those nifty Samsung features you might be a fan of. So, keep that in mind if you're planning to make the switch. Of course, I can't test everything, so it's possible I might miss mentioning some issues that could pop up on different devices. Be sure to visit the comments and the description to learn more about any potential errors or bugs. For this demonstration, I'll be using the Galaxy S10e. But like I mentioned earlier, this guide is straightforward and the steps are the same regardless of your phone model. If you run into any issues or find your device stuck in a boot loop, check out the description for troubleshooting tips. And if you decide to go back to the original firmware later, don't worry, I've got a video on that too. Just follow it if you want to revert back. By watching this video, not only will you learn how to install this ROM, but you'll also get insights into its performance, Geekbench scores, daily life tasks, camera quality, gaming performance, and overall daily usage compared to the official stock ROM. So stick around until the end to fully understand what this ROM offers, what it brings to the table, and who will benefit the most from it. Let's get started. So grab your Galaxy device with at least 50% battery, a USB cable to connect your phone to your PC, and a PC with internet access to download the necessary files. Now first, we're going to unlock the bootloader on our Galaxy device, but if your phone's bootloader is already unlocked, you can skip to the next section. To unlock the bootloader, follow these steps. Connect to Wi-Fi. Go to Settings. Scroll down and check for any software updates. We want our device to have all the latest updates installed before moving on with the rest of the procedure. Then, navigate to the Biometrics and Security section and remove any lock screen method you have set up. Also, ensure you have backed up all your accounts and personal data as this process will delete everything on your device. Once you've completed these steps, go to About Phone. Then, Software Information. Tap on the Build Number 7 times to enable Developer Options. After that, go back to the Settings menu, choose Developer Options, scroll down and enable OEM Unlocking. After that, turn off your mobile phone. Now, getting into download mode might vary slightly for each of these Galaxy devices. Typically, on Samsung phones, you need to press the volume down, power and Bixby keys simultaneously to enter download mode. On some models, you may need to hold down the Bixby and volume down buttons while connecting the data cable. Regardless of which Galaxy device you have, simply Google the specific method for your model to get into download mode and follow those instructions. Once your device is turned off, press and hold volume down and Bixby keys together and connect your USB cable from the laptop. This will bring up the download mode screen, where you'll find instructions and prompts related to bootloader locking and unlocking. Here's what to do next. On the download mode screen, long press the volume up key. After the long press, follow the on-screen instructions and press volume up again to unlock the bootloader. Just following that, your phone will turn off and boot up again after a few minutes. Once the device reboots, your phone's bootloader will be unlocked and you can proceed with the rest of the installation process. Now if you have the Galaxy S9, S9 Plus or Note 9, you can skip ahead to the specific section for those devices. For the rest of you, keep watching for the next steps. Alright, now it's time to flash the Pixel OS Android 14 ROM onto our Samsung S10. This ROM brings all the awesome features from the latest Pixel devices, like a more organized quick panel, home and lock screen customizations, security enhancements, and much more. Now that we've unlocked the bootloader, we can move on to the next step, downloading the required files. Check the description box for the links or head to your browser to download the Samsung USB drivers. You'll need to install these drivers so that your phone can be recognized by your laptop in the upcoming steps. Now, we need to download the Odin tool. This is what we'll use to flash Pixel Recovery onto our device. Head over to the Pixel Recovery page to download it from the SourceForge link. 
Then, download the TWRP recovery file specific to your device model. Since I'm using a Galaxy S10e, I'll be getting the recovery file for that model, but make sure you download the right one for your device. Now I know what you're thinking. Why do we need TWRP recovery if we're focusing on pixel recovery? Don't worry, I'll explain why we're doing this later on. Next, we'll download the ROM file from the Pixel OS website. Since I'm working with the Samsung S10e, I'll be downloading the version specific to that model. Make sure you download the right one for your device. After that, download the VB Meta file using the link provided in the description box. Next, we need to download ADB tools. Visit the link provided to download the suitable SDK tools for your system, whether it's Windows, Mac, or Linux. Once there, accept the terms and begin the download. Also, make sure to download the 7-zip installer as well. Once you've downloaded the necessary files, take your phone and turn it off completely. With the device off, press and hold the volume down and Bixby keys together. Then connect your USB cable from the laptop to the phone. This will bring up the download mode screen. Now on the computer screen. First, install the Samsung USB drivers. If you haven't done this already, make sure to install them so your computer can recognize your device properly. Next, install 7-Zip. This tool will help us convert the recovery file into Odin readable file. So let's convert that recovery file into a TAR format. For that, right-click on the recovery file. Navigate to 7-Zip and select Add to Archive. Choose TAR as the archive format and click OK. Now, right-click the downloaded platform tools, zip file and select Extract All by choosing a destination folder, such as Drive C. After that, copy the path address. Open the Start menu and type Environment Variables and select Edit the System Environment Variables. In the Environment Variables window, under System Variables, find and select the path variable, then click Edit. Click New and add the path we copied earlier. Click OK to close all dialog boxes. After that, restart your system once. Next, copy the Pixel OS ROM file into the Platform Tools folder. Rename the Pixel OS file to ROM for easier identification. Once you've completed these steps, you'll be ready to proceed with the installation of Pixel OS on your Samsung Galaxy device. Once that is done, go to the folder where you save the downloaded files. Unzip the Odin file and run the Odin application. Once Odin is open, you should see that your phone is already recognized by the tool. In the settings, make sure to uncheck the Auto Restart option and you're ready to move on. In Odin, click on AP and navigate to select the Pixel OS recovery file you downloaded. Then click on CP and choose the VB Meta file, loading it into Odin as well. With both files loaded, tap Start and wait a few seconds for the process to complete. You'll see a green Pass message if the TWRP recovery was successfully installed. Alright, hold up a moment. What if you didn't see that reassuring Pass message from Odin, or worse, it crashed on you? Well, this is where TWRP comes into play, just like I mentioned earlier. Open Odin again. This time, click on AP and select the TWRP recovery file you downloaded earlier. Then click on CP and choose the VB Meta file, making sure both files are loaded into Odin. Once everything's set, hit Start and give it a moment. If all goes well, you'll see a reassuring green pass message indicating that TWRP recovery has been successfully installed on your device. Now, if Pixel OS recovery installed successfully on your device and you didn't encounter any issues, you can go ahead and skip these next steps. But for those of you who couldn't install the recovery image using Odin, they will follow the next steps. I'm going to show you how to install it using TWRP recovery. You'll then boot into the Pixel OS recovery the same way you would with TWRP. Remember, whether you installed Pixel OS recovery using Odin or TWRP, this is how you'll boot into the recovery. First, let's turn off the device. Keep the USB plugged in and press all the keys together to power it down. Once the device turns off, keep holding the power button, Bixby button and volume up button together. As soon as you see the Samsung logo, release the power button but keep holding the other two buttons. Once in the recovery menu, select wipe and format all data by typing yes. Now, go to the folder where you saved the files on your computer. Find the recovery image file and copy it to your phone's internal storage. Once it's copied, switch to your phone. Now, navigate to the Install folder and tap on the recovery file you just copied. A menu will pop up. Select Recovery from there and swipe to flash the file. Once that's done, go back and hit the Reboot button, then tap Recovery. Now just wait for the recovery mode to load again. Alright, now that we've booted into the Pixel OS recovery, the first step is to perform a factory reset on your phone. 
Next, tap on Apply Update and select Apply from ADB. Now, let's head back to your laptop screen. Navigate to the Platform Tools folder, right-click and choose Open in Terminal. Type ADB Devices in the terminal. You should see some text along with the serial number, confirming your device is properly connected to the laptop. After that, simply type ADB sideload rom.zip and hit enter. The ROM will begin flashing. Be patient, it should complete in a few minutes. Once you see install completed with error 0, the process was successful. Now go to advanced and select reboot system now. Wait for the setup to complete. Within the next few minutes, you'll be greeted with the Pixel OS Android 14 welcome screen. Alright, now it's time to dive into the installation procedure for the Galaxy Note 9, S9 and S9 Plus. First things first, copy the ROM file into the internal storage of your phone. Next, go to Wipe, then Advanced Wipe. Check everything except internal storage, micro SD and USB OTG, then swipe to Wipe. Go back and type Yes to format data. Return to the main menu, tap on Install, browse to the ROM file you copied, select it, and swipe to flash the file. Once that's done, go back again, go to Wipe, and format data by typing Yes. Finally, reboot to the system. Your device should boot into the system in a few minutes. However, if your device gets stuck in a boot loop, you'll need to download the DDM file. Simply download it and move it to the phone's internal storage. Once the file is copied, tap on Install, browse to find the DDM file and swipe to flash it. Once that's done, go back again, go to Wipe, format data by typing Yes, and reboot to the system. This time, your device should boot into the system in a few minutes. Go ahead and follow through with the standard setup steps and enjoy the smooth software experience with this custom ROM. If you're curious about how this ROM stacks up against the original stock ROM, then by using it, you'll notice that there is an improvement in Geekbench scores, and the real thing shines through in the user experience. This ROM feels incredibly fast. The animations, the overall experience, everything is smooth and well put together. In short, it's made my old Samsung S10 enjoyable to use again. The camera quality hasn't seen much improvement, but it still gets the job done. Gaming performance is about the same, but you can expect better battery life and fewer heating issues, which is a nice bonus. I found this custom ROM to be quite stable with minimal glitches or slowdowns, which has made me quite satisfied with it. If you decide to give it a try, I'd love to hear about your experience in the comments below so others can benefit too. Now, if you decide this ROM isn't for you after installing and testing it out, check out my video on the screen for instructions on how to revert back to the original Samsung software or switch to another custom ROM like One UI 6. It's all about finding what works best for your device and preferences. And hey, if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching and have a fantastic day. This is Kanistek signing off.